sisters, we are here today with great excitement. Uh, and, and I'm going to say as the, the television people say, we've got breaking news. We, breaking news is the last week we, we took off telling Brother King, again, we're grateful for him uh, and the media ministry. I was telling him I wasn't ready uh, to have our lesson for our Bible study for 2022. By the way, Happy New Year's. It's so good to see that you've made it in the, in the new year. Got, got over 21 and walking into 22. So we, we wish you a most prosperous uh, and happy, which means blessed, new year. So we come... We come with some exciting news to give to you. We've come to you with our new uh, direction, new theme, the key word, challenge. Another key word, overcoming. Another key word, victory. Uh, I, I'm sitting at the end of the year in, in an installation service, and God gave me this scripture because I was asking, I said, Lord, I, I was going to do the invitation of discipleship at a pastor's installation. And I wanted a scripture. I said, Lord, a scripture. First John, I think it's First John, he gave me, I think it's in that fifth chapter. And the word that come, he that overcometh the world. It's him that do it by faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? It's him that believes that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. I thought I could have left that at New Birth Missionary Baptist Church with, with the new pastor, Pastor Morris. I thought I had to leave that with them. But God says no. And on that Friday night, New Year's Eve service, we preach about overcoming. And our, our pastor Bishop Cook sends the book. We were not created to be defeated. And so when I was walking through the bookstore and uh, said, I'm going to find a book that we can teach from, and I saw a book that was out of place by Dr. David Jeremiah called Overcomer. So I, I text Brother King and let him know that we will be teaching on strategies of overcoming the life that we live in this world. Overcoming the strategies. We're going we're gonna to be teaching on that. I'm excited about it. I'm, uh, 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 it's, it's hard for me to, to, to keep my ins uh, incitement, my excitement down. Uh, but I want to share with you because I made a statement that, that Friday, New Year's Eve uh, service that I don't, I don't pastor no losers. I pastor winners. If you're connected to this pastor, you are a winner. Why? Simply because I'm a winner. Simply because I'm connected to Jesus Christ, who is a winner. He was a winner before he, he, we even thought that he was a loser. The other fellow, the devil, he's a, he's a loser. When we are not connected with Christ, we are connected with him. And we need that. Uh, texting my uh, education director, telling them about the key word is to challenge the next generation. She texted me back and she said, Pastor, uh, that's a good thing because it is appropriate for 2022. Why? She says this because our young people, our next generation will be have many challenges in 2022 that they will have to face. And not only that, I said, not only them, but us too. My challenge is to keep you engaged. Keep you engaged in your relationship with God. Keep you growing or allowing the Holy Ghost to grow your relationship. 
Bishop, I was just listening to Bishop Noel Jones, and he was saying one of his members, I think he said, was a stockbroker. He said, Pastor, he said, we, he talked about dialogue and discourse. He said, his concern uh, that the congregations today, we need to uh, uh, have an intercourse or disc, a discourse, or intercourse where we, we, he can know that the congregation gets it when he teaches it. So that, that's a challenge that was thrown my way right now. I need to know. Mr. Jones said it this way. He said, uh, uh, the way congregation, large congregation, you can't do that individual thing. He said, maybe we should, he said, maybe we should give tests. I'm not going to give tests. But as a smaller congregation as we had, even if we act like a, like a mega church, yet and still, I need to know if you are engaged with the teaching in this ministry. It's, 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 it's valuable to me. But the king works hard to present this thing, this ministry. What has, uh, uh, the value of this ministry have grown because of the, because of the, partly because of the pandemic. And all, all we had to do was our sick and shut in. That's all we talked about. What's going to happen with the sick and shut in? Now everybody. And so this ministry here, as we teaches you about the strategies, the strategies that you need to overcome the challenges of this life. Because why? Because we know it's hard out there. Sometimes it, it feels like the, the world is ripping apart at the seams. Sometimes it, it feels like our hearts can't take any more hurt. But, 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 but no matter, but no matter what the world throws at you, anxiety, fear, confusion, and even temptation, you have a choice on how you respond to those challenges. Or you can concede defeat. Or you can live a life of victory in God. It's easy for us to choose a, a, a victory. I take victory. But, but, but are you ready, are we ready to walk each day in victory? Are we ready to win the fight against fear? Are we ready to overcome the world in practice and not do it just in theory? Well, with the help of Dr. Jeremiah's book, Overcome, I, I, I'm going to show you how you can overcome, how you can be an overcomer. What would happen if you, fa if you face your challenges? In the name of Jesus. What would happen if life be, be like if your, if your goal in every situation was to bring glory to the name of Jesus? What would happen if we would fully embrace God's strategy for victory? If, if, we, if you do those things, you most likely would be an overcomer. And, and believe it or not, that's who you really are. When you place your faith and your hope in Jesus Christ. Paul says in Romans 8 and 37, if he's the writer, he is the writer. He says this, yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who love us. The book teaches us, teaches us, it will teach us God's strategy for overcoming the challenges that, you, that you're going to face. How do I know what those strategies are? Because when the Holy Spirit inspired the Apostle Paul to list the spiritual armor, that we need to protect ourselves. This is what Paul says. 
Finally, I like that. My brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that, 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 that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, and, but we wrestle against principalities, against powers, and against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having gird, girded your waist with truth, having put on the blessed breastplate of righteousness, and having sawed your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking up, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darks of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 18. If, if I, was, I read a little bit further. Paul says, uh, pray. He said, especially for him, because he was in bounds, which means he was in jail. And yet still he was doing ministry. And Paul was saying this, pray for me. Not because I'm in bounds, but because, not because I'm in jail, but because I need to be bold in speaking the word of God. But when you base, based on these verses, Ephesians 6, verse 10 to 18, we know the devil's attacks. It attacks us in eight ways. Number one. The devil wants to keep you from God's strength. I'm not going to elaborate on each one of them because we will talk about them later during our teaching ministry on being an overcomer. So number one, he wants to keep you from God's strength. Number two, he's after your honesty because he's a liar. The Bible calls him the father of liars or the father of lies. He's after your heart and your righteous life. Y'all hear that, people? He wants to, the, n- number four, he wants to fill you with anxiety. If you're taking note, maybe I'm going too fast. Uh, number one, he wants you to keep you from God's strength. And number two, he's after your honesty. Number three, he's after your heart and your righteous life. Number four, he wants to fill you with anxiety. Ooh, Lord, help me. (laughs) He wants to fill you with anxiety. Number six, he longs to confuse your mind. What should I do? What should I do? How should I do it? What should I do? When should I do it? He wants to confuse your mind. And then, number seven, he loves to tempt you to do sin. He wants you to sin. And lastly, he hates it powerful. He hates when you pray. The devil hates when you pray. They say he was afraid. He said, they said it hates. He hates when you pray. In each one of those chapters, we're going to learn some overcoming tra- strategies to defeat the, all eight of those attacks. 
You're going to meet men and women in these pages that overcame their own adversity. So you can learn from and be inspired by their determination. You also will discover the path of victory over trials that you face in your own life. That's simply put, want to help you, want to encourage you. My prayer is to, that, that the words that God puts in me is to encourage someone. Yes, all of them, all of their trials were loss. It was disappointment, betrayal, abuse, injuries, lies, addiction, self-doubt, mistakes, grief, anger, anxiety, and one of them that we got some regrets. That's our trials. Can I name them? Loss, disappointment, betrayal, abuse, injuries, lies, addiction, self-doubt, mistakes, grief, anger, anxiety, and regret. There is nothing that the devil can throw at you that you cannot overcome. Get excited. Get in your spirit. Get ready. Get, get ready. Can you see the, 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 the method or, or, or a way of being methodical? First of all, telling you what to wear. Why would I tell you what to wear for war if you're not going to war? Not only did, it, did, did the apostle tell us what to wear in war, he turned around and tell us what the devil going to do to us. And then he tell us about the, 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 the things that then it's the things that's going to come our way. We just named them. So, but anything that not only the devil throws at you, but life throws at you, you, you will be able to overcome it if you follow the, strat the strategies that we're going to use in this lesson, in this teaching. But the time to prepare is right now. Can I say it again? The time to prepare is right now. Can I stress it? The time to get ready is right now. Jesus told, told, told uh, uh, the people in the, in the parable of the, uh, the, 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 the uh, bridesmaid, prepare right now. When Satan attacks come, Dr. Jeremiah said that you will not have time to Google the spiritual armor. You won't have time to call a friend, to get advice on a counterattack of the, to, of the devil. You may not even have time to get on your knees to pray. So what do you do? You prepare right now. Get ready right now because it's going to happen in your life. Get ready right now because you, has, you have just put your name down or your name has been, been put on the list of overcomers. I told you on, on, on New Year's Eve, December 31st, that God does not see you as a loser. He sees you as a mighty warrior. You see yourself. Somebody else sees you as a loser, but God sees you as a mighty warrior. In our first chapter, we're going to focus on David, the Old Testament's greatest overcomer. In the last chapter, we'll tell the story of history's greatest overcomer, the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and, and through the rest of the chapters in between, we'll discover eight strategies for overcoming the challenges we will face in our lives. Number one, the eight 
strategies, I'm going to get that word right after I'm going to pronounce it about a thousand times, strategies to overcome the challenges that we're going to face in life. Number one, how can we overcome weakness with strength? That's the first thing. What was the, what was the first attack of the devil? That he won't keep you, he wants to keep you from God's strength. So number one, we can overcome weakness with strength. Number two, how can we overcome falsehood with truth? The devil don't want you honest. So number two is, how can we overcome falsehood with truth? Number three, how can we overcome evil with good? Because the devil won't want to go after your righteous life if you are living one. So how can we overcome evil with good? Number four, how can we overcome anxiety with peace? The devil wants to fill you with anxiety. But we're going to teach you how to overcome anxiety with peace. Lord, I'm going to be a better person after all of this. No, 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 number five, how can we overcome fear with faith? The devil wants you to doubt, fear you with doubt, but we're going to overcome fear with faith. How can we overcome confusion with wisdom? How can we overcome confusion with wisdom? Number seven. How can we overcome temptation with sin? Because the devil wants to tempt you to sin. That's number seven of his attack. So number seven of our counterattack is how to overcome temptation with scripture. The devil wants you to wants don't don't want you to pray. So number eight, the eight strategy is to overcome everything. With prayer. Remember what the scripture says. In all things, prayer and supplication. In all things. The journey of the overcomer is a wonderful, profound, healing journey. God is all good, and He only gives good gifts, one after the other, again and again to strengthen you to whatever the future holds for you. I got a plan for you, and it is for good. If you open up your heart to receive those gifts, he will fill you with it. He will fill it to you with overflowing. Life, living the life of an overcomer, will bring strength, it will bring peace, it will bring courage, it will bring hope, joy that you have ever known, that you have never known. It will bring also victory in your spiritual life. That's my purpose. That's important because victory is God's purpose for his children. Thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15 and 57. Thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ. 2 Corinthians 2 and 14. Join us, those of you of the members of this church and those of you who are watching from others. Join us on this journey to live an unstoppable strength, unmovable faith, unbelievable power in the face of every challenge that will come your way. Join us and embrace your God-given destiny for you are an overcomer. For you are an overcomer. He put a colon that the, uh, Jer Dr. Jeremiah put a colon on that because a colon is in between a question and a period. 
Either you're an overcomer or you're not. I say to you, if you are an overcomer, walk with us. If you're not an overcomer, walk with us and you will become an overcomer. Engage yourself into this teaching ministry, into this teaching here. I promise you that I'm going to put everything that I have in it and let the Lord do the rest. So I say to you, people of God, you are an overcomer. You are a winner. God, Dr. Jeremiah said it, uh, Bishop, Bishop uh, Cook said it, God has not created you for defeat. He has made you to be a winner. You read in Genesis, you shall have dominion over all the things of this world. Dominion, even the evil one. Because God going to help you to overcome him. So I say to you, people of God, let me pray for you. Gracious Master, we come in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you for running head on into this word. An overcomer. Uh, uh, facing our challenge. Winners. Victory. You said this is the victory. Even our faith. You said who is he that overcometh the world? Him that believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God. We do believe that Jesus is the Son of God. So, Lord, continue to give us victory every day. Every time defeat come our way, we rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Every time the evil one come, we rebuke him in the name of Jesus. We rebuke him as Joshua the high priest stood before the angel and the devil stood on the side of him. You spoke to him. You spoke to the devil and said you rebuke him. And Lord, we stand right now rebuking the devil in the name of Jesus Christ. He is the father of lies. We love you and we bless you. Good evening, Law Street. Good evening, my friends and my brothers and my sisters who have come and shared with us in this ministry. We ask that you please, sir, please, ma'am, continue to join us every week. As much as Brother King and how, as God has allowed and will allow us, we're going to be right here. And we ask that you be right there. Click on the lesson. Those that you miss, go back. If it's something you didn't understand, go back and listen to it again. And you're guaranteed, call me. And I'll help you to understand that. God bless you. I love you with the love of God. Lost Street, hopefully, prayerfully, that we see you Sunday morning for Sunday school, 8.15 and church service at 9 o'clock this Sunday for communion. Sorry we missed it last week, but we will serve it this Sunday. God bless you. God keep you again. I love you with the love of God in 2022. Amen. Amen.